Well then, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, today I'll present a short uh, introduction to Orbs of version 3, uh, but I will begin, begin by presenting myself. I've been involved in the OpenRISC project since 2010. I forgot to write down my name, as you know. Uh, I'm Olof, uh, and I'm working for Quamcom in Gothenburg, Sweden, um, with FPGA design and FPGA system architecture. I've been maintaining the Internet Mac and Orbsoft and uh, OR 1200, and I've been working mostly on Orbsoft version 3 for the past two years. So, what's Orbsoft? It's the Open Risk Reference Platform System on Chip. Uh, we use it to connect an Open Risk CPU with a lot of peripheral interfaces and runs the whole system. It started out as a way to test the original R1200 CPU uh, and it grew in object version 2 to uh, include the rest of the tests, support for multiple J boards, uh, and a lot of other things. And for Orbtalk version 3, we have done a lot of new stuff. So let's find out what. We use Orbsock to bring up systems, to debug the RTL, to run regression tests with the framework, to port new FPGA architectures, oh, oh, sorry, FPGA boards, and to test use, user programs. Um, and with version 3 of Orbsock, we wanted to make those use cases easier than they were before. And there were some issues with Orbsoft version 2. Uh, we had a lot of duplication of codes, and we saw that the original cores that were available, mostly on open cores, started to deviate from the ones we had in Orbsoft, which were local copies that changed over time. We saw also that we had a lot of... Um, sorry, I said that. Uh, we also saw that it was hard to make it scale when we wanted to add new cores and new boards, and it was a bit complicated. So we took a fresh look at the system, and saw that it can be described like something like this. So these are all the cores I showed in the last picture. Uh, they are connected together with the top level. Uh, they are then uh, given to the synthesis and based around tools together with constraints and device information, or they can be put in a test bench and run in a simulator together with a test case. So what's the core then? We say the cores are a collection of HGL code that can be synthesized or compiled. Cores are available as packages, sort code packages, uh, either on your computer or online from say GitHub or open cores or any other place. And you have dependency between cores. So, for example, if you have uh, Ethernet Mac, back to this example, it itself could depend on some FIFOs or it could depend on a RDMI uh, interface. And the UDP stack depends in turn on the Ethernet Mac, and the top level depends on the UDP stack. So, I think that this sounds very much like a source-based distribution with dependent management, something we already have in software. And this is where a lot of the inspiration comes from uh, for this system. We want to make it modular. Uh, we don't want to make it a big lump of HGL code. We want to avoid changes to the upstream cores because no one has any clue why some patches were made. And we have a lot of Orbs of version 2 systems floating around on the internet right now, which are similar but not identical. Uh, we want the separation of the source and generated files uh, because then you know what you can remove and what you should keep and what's, what's the original source of your generated files. As I said earlier, we have problems with scalability, so we want to make it easy to extend, and since we have a lot of new people uh, coming in, and we've seen that they ask a lot of questions about how to use Orbsock, we want to make it easy to use. And 
finally, we have several nice wheels. Let's use them instead of inventing new ones. <coughs> Doing FPGA design, or rather RTL design, is a bit complicated. Uh, we have vendors which have different tool chains that are not very easy to work with all the time. We have the two main languages, PHDL and Verilog, which is a bit outdated and uh, not very friendly to make generic constructs. Uh, we have no standardized build systems and we have to handle two types of targets uh, which are very different in some regards. The simulator and the actual FPGA or ASIC target. And System Verilog is a promising new language, not very new anymore, but uh, we feel that the open source tools were later and Eagles very long, uh, among other, still have still don't have enough functionality to work as system very long simulators. The original OrbSock in OrbSock version 2 was a complete system with RTL code and tools for generating uh, systems. This is not the case anymore. This is now divided into three major components. We have OpSock itself, which is uh, a bunch of Python scripts uh, to generate all the compiled scripts and to put together uh, the system on chip. But it doesn't contain any RTL code itself, because that is moved to the course, uh, which is a collection of descriptions. I will come back to that later. Um, and we also have a workspace that can be deleted at any time, so we can have both OrbSock and Course as read-only, system-wide installable things and uh, just add a new workspace when we want to uh, do a new project. I apologize for the small font here. Uh, I had some problems with Office. Yes. So about course then. Uh, we host a collection of course at a place called, or a repository called Orbsock Course at GitHub. <coughs> these are the course that are currently supported by uh, Orbsock and the course that you will work with later on in the workshop. We have courses that are synthesizable such as the memory controllers and UART and uh, the open risk processors. We have some that are only available for simulation, like the OR1K L loader and very long test bench tools. Is that MT48 guy? That's an SD RAM model. It's not a controller, is it? Sorry, yeah, that's a, a model. Yeah. So that one is for test benches too. We have a lot of cores and we have something called systems. And systems are basically core with a uh, little extra. They contain information on uh, which device they should be programmed for uh, and constraints for that device. But that's basically the only difference between the core and the system. And in some of these cores, we host the RTL code, uh, but in most of them, they are downloaded on the fly from the original repository. So we have two types of cores. The external core, which is a core where the RTL code is located somewhere else. In some cases, the core doesn't work, but we know how to make it work. And we can have patches uh, locally to Orbsock. Like in this case, we have added uh, two patches to the VGA LCD core to fix a typo and to auto resync on FIPA underruns. The local course, on the other hand, has all its RTL code in the, uh, in the tree. So how does this work? An example. This is a pretty common example. We want to run a test case, which is a C file that has been compiled to an L file. 
I want to run it on a simulated target, the E0 Nano, for this, in this occasion. Um, we want to make sure it doesn't run forever, so we have a timeout. We want to see uh, a waveform of the watch to analyze it, so we run with the dash dash BCD option. And this is how it works. We tell it to simulate with the SIM param, we tell which system to simulate, and we give it other options. And these options are uh, specific to the system, so well, all these options will probably be, be available for systems, but uh, we can add systems that are, or we can add options that will work for certain system. What we currently do is that we're adding more board porch, we're adding more cores, we try to clean up the defiance files, because that is something that we found very problematic, uh, especially if we want to have se se several UART cores with slightly different configuration that's not very easy to do right now. Uh, we want to move the patches back upstream because many of the cores, especially in open cores, have been dead for quite a while and we are keeping a lot of patches in uh, Auto version 2 and now with Auto version 3 that we want to have upstream. Uh, there's a new improved wishbone interconnect generator also in uh, Auto version 3 that we want to make even better. And since we have our fancy new MR1KX, is the next in them? Yeah. Uh, we want to try both that and the R1200 to see how they behave. So we want to make that easy. And since if Orbsock errors out currently, it's not very easy to tell what went wrong. So we want to improve that. Now that's done. We want to add even more board ports. We want to add even, add even more cores. We want to make the top level generation automatic, but uh, not inside of Orbsa. We want to do, use external tools for that. What do you mean by that? Hmm? What do you mean, top level generation external to Orbsa? Because I, I would have thought you could just sit there and say, uh, basically via a GUI or parameter file, like, this is the cores I want, this is how many, this is the addresses. Yeah. I want both the top level and the wishbone hardware generated. Yes. But I don't want Orbsa to do that because it's too much work. But <laughs> <laughs> would you be a, Would you accept if someone else would? <laughs> yeah, you can do it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, not like you, but I so IP exact. That's in a way where we're specifying certain things that IP exact already specifies, such as like bus interfaces and the address on the bus, right? So. Can you not also specify an IP exact the top level configuration and then? Yeah, I think you can. I, uh, I guess some tools will generate a top level for you as well. I've done some experimentation with Cactus 2, uh, the HDL only at the moment. Uh, and like the ID, but as usual with those auto generating tools, they don't work very good in practice. But what I'm mainly thinking here is that we want to export IP exact information for other tools that we can consume them and maybe put together a top level and then give it back into Orbsock. Write the documentation, that's more of a joke. Uh, I don't think that will happen. <laughs> <laughs> we want to add versioning and use flag support in course. And what does that mean? Versioning means that we can say that we need MOR1KX uh, version 1.1 or above make this work. Uh, and if we don't have that, we, it will fail. Uh, that way we can have several versions of a core at the same time. And currently it's Altera only. Uh, it's not much work to have Xylem support, but it hasn't been done yet because no one has uh, run it on a Xylem support. And we could make a new not sure what you should do, but uh... well, that'd, that'd be good to you know, as I said, indicate which. Like you know, like the the Altera SOP C thing, we drag a thing on and drag the bus thing. Yeah, but that's top level up generation. Yeah, I guess. Although you do select the memory map with that. Yeah. And and you do define the bus architecture, so what's connected to what. Mm. Yeah, and you can expect core files or whatever. Yeah. 
So I think that would be added by someone who knows how to do it. And this is basically what, basically what I had today. So uh, have fun with the workshop. On to the workshop. Yeah, yeah questions. What, what, what do you mean with the GUI? What, what would be the use of the GUI? Because uh, for me, a GUI would be, uh, yeah, telling around this IP, this IP, this bus, and so on. But yeah, I, I frankly have no idea, but it's possible. <laughs> Yeah, no, but what is the difference for you between top-level generation and Wii? Is it maybe for you the top-level generation is only a script? I mean, top-level generation, generate you, you could have, do that with the command line. Generate the top-level. Uh, but if you... Uh, I'm sure. You, you just, just to understand, maybe, maybe the, the top-level generation is not uh, graphical. No, it, it doesn't have to be. Um, Question. You could maybe even have a GUI to, to control the whole thing for you if you're a bit of a terminal phobe. You could actually run all sort of GUI and it would come up and you don't see it and you press which system you want and you press build and it does it all for you or something like that. Yeah, that so you could choose which peripheral you want to connect to the database and instruction. Like if you know QCIS or no. And I think it's welcome. And I'm the GUI itself is welcome too. It's eye candy, if not. People like eye candy. So this was it's short, but uh, I hope you <coughs> get to know Orbsock version 3 better at the workshop. Yeah. And do you have a timeline or an ID target for the Orbsock version 3? No, I only have what no. we're working on what we haven't started on yet. Um, I released version 3.1 uh, about a week ago, so now we have two releases, 3.0 and 3.1. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, Frank and Stefan, who has been doing a lot of help, uh, and Jibu started doing a lot of help too, so I think that it will accelerate, but I don't have any timeline for the features. You have to request features. <laughs> oh, for the itself. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hatches well. But it's already usable. It's, it's like, it's okay now. Yeah. You, can, you can work with it. It works. Good enough. Good enough. Yeah. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, does it support wishbone pipeline uh, architecture? Uh, the recent revision? Uh, B4. B4. Well, actually, that's up to each core. Uh, and we don't have very many cores uh, right now that support B4. I know that uh, the people at CERN uh, use B4 a lot. I think they were the one who requested the provision. But the ones that we're using only support B3. So the only Except for the cores which are not actually hosted in uh, Orbsock, we would have to update the Arbiters and uh, the interconnect tools and the bus functional models to, to support B4. Uh, and that could be done. I'm not sure how uh, widely used it is. Okay. And um, is there like a wrapper or anything available which converts B3 to B4? Do you know of any? I think that there is examples in the B4 specification how to connect a B4 capability master with a B3 slave and vice versa. But I haven't, I haven't looked at it very much. There are some, uh, some mails in the wishbone mailing list uh, about B4. I think four or five mails. It's about. Why did you change the, the world target system? Just to understand why uh, target was not properly fitting and system was better than the other one. Was that called target? I think so. I think it was called board. Board? Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing, uh, because we say we have a D0 nano we can make several systems or targets uh, that uses the zero nano. We can make a bad example. 
we take the digital and accuracy of the chess uh, more, I.O. Uh, we can make a basic or risk based system with the Ethernet and things like that. We can uh, make uh, simulated Amiga or something. Uh, so system now includes the, the SOC the description plus and the board. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can, uh, a board can be, can have several systems. Questions. And I'm sure tons of questions will come up during the workshop, so as you use it, you will probably uh, get to know some of the features that we would like and you know, stuff that needs to be fixed up. So. Well, thank you, then.